So today we are changing gears a little bit. We are going to be uh, doing just a quick song or two of worship, get in the Lord's presence, and then we will be breaking up into family units, and we will be separating out and praying for a vision from the Lord for not only ourselves, but for our kids, and then asking for specific steps. Lord, if this is the vision, what are the steps to getting there? So an example would be me and Taylor have been praying a lot about the church, feel like there's transition coming uh, from a job perspective. And so praying about God give us a specific vision, timing, steps we need to be taking to prepare for that. Um, and so that we can get not only ourselves ready, but the church ready for any kind of transition. And then um, for winter, we're praying about what kind of biblical education do we want to start giving her? What kind of things do we want to start speaking over her on a daily basis? And most important part of this is do not pray and walk away and do nothing. Write it down. And as a family unit, it's your job to keep each other accountable. Because I really have a desire that all of us are getting vision from the Lord. All of us are then taking that and putting it into motion in our lives every single day. So, with that said, Alan and Julie are taking the garage. The front room is available. If you're willing to brave the cold, obviously the back porch, front yard is available. Um, otherwise, you're more than welcome to take Winter's room or the, that back bedroom. You can take this one, which is basically our storage room at the moment. Not really anywhere to sit in there, but you're welcome to take that room as well. Obviously, living room's available. Um, so just find a spot, get alone, take some time to pray uh, as a family and say, all right, Lord, where are we going? Make sense? Yep. And I have paper and pens up here for you guys to write it down. Okay. Well, with that said, we can go ahead and pray and get going. Father God, we come before you and we thank you for this day. God, we pray for God, heavenly vision for our lives. Father, we pray that you would be a light unto a feet, our feet and a light. Oh, man, I cannot talk. A lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And God, in your mighty name, we pray that you would speak specific words in our lives, God. And whenever the enemy would try and come and God, try and push us down, God, we would remember the words that you speak today. And we would declare them prophetically over our lives, God, and that the words you speak today would be a foundation that we could stand on, God. I pray for specific scriptures, specific words for each and every child, God, the way that we can uh, raise our children in the way that they should go. And God, more than anything, I pray that we would encounter your spirit today. Father, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. I think it's really important that we all get a word from the Lord that we can stand on. And the perspective the Lord gave me about this was if you look at the life of Jesus, when, when he's confronted by Satan in the wilderness after 40 days of praying and fasting, it's interesting that he immediately starts quoting scripture because John 1 tells us what? God is scripture. Like Jesus is scripture. So when Jesus starts quoting scripture, he starts quoting what God has said about him. And I think as Christians, it's important that we recognize when we are confronted by the enemy, we need to start quoting the promises God has said about us. And I believe scripture is 100% a part of that. I believe we need to quote the Bible. I believe we need to know the Bible. But I think we also need to have promises so that when the enemy comes and he wants to start talking, that we can go, no, but I know God the Father has told me this. And I will tell you about the promises in my life. And, and here's what I'll tell you. I believe his word more than yours. Me and Taylor were reading in Hebrews last night, Hebrews 11, the Hall of Fame, and, or Hall of Faith, whatever you, whatever you want to call it. And it talked about Sarah. She judged the one who had promised to be faithful. And therefore, she was able to get pregnant. And I think for us, I think it's important today that we get a promise from the Lord and we, oh, that's not good. And we judge him who has promised faithful. And not just in, a, I hope this happens, but in, a, I am going to behave as though this will happen. 
and I'm going to trust God's going to hold up his end of the bargain. Does that make sense? So to have the shift from just kind of run of the mill, whatever, just plan out, like this is not planning your future. This is asking God what he has planned for your future. And then we're going to act on faith that he will do what he said he's going to do. Does that make sense? I just really want us to get on the same page that this is a vision casting weekend where we as a church are going to come before the Lord and we're going to say, God, I need you to give me a promise that will get me through whatever storm, whatever difficulty stands between me and where you're trying to get to. So with that said, we are all dismissed. You can feel free to grab a room. I think there's papers on the table right here with pens, right? Those, yep, those are the papers. Uh, so grab one, feel free to spread out um, and then get into your uh, families and start praying.